Welcome back to the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease video series. Today we're talking about suspected deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, its pathogenesis and complications. And we're going to have a dedicated focus on Virchow's triad. First, we should note that the venous thrombosis is not a stroke. Venous thrombosis can cause pulmonary emboli. It's the arterial thrombi that cause stroke. Now on to Virchow's triad. Note that it consists of three factors that lead to clotting of blood in an abnormal way. First is injury to the blood vessel. Second, a hypercoagulable state of the blood. Third, venous stasis. Let's start off with vessel injury. Vessel injury exposes tissue factor on damaged cells and subendothelium for von Willenbrand factor to bind, thus triggering the clotting cascade. For more on the clotting cascade, please see the Calgary Guide video on the clotting cascade. What can cause vessel injury? Three main things. High blood pressure, hypertension, which physically damages blood vessel walls. Bacteria, which can adhere and invade the blood vessel walls. And artificial heart valves, which represents an abnormal surface to blood flow. Second, a hypercoagulable state, which is defined as an increased ability for the blood to coagulate or clot upon stimulation. Many factors can lead to a hypercoagulable state, including trauma, or surgery, which is a form of systemic injury to the blood vessels, activating the coagulation cascade. Cancer, or malignancies, can cause the blood to be hypercoagulable because they oftentimes abnormally release coagulation-promoting cytokines. Platelet activation, for whatever reason, can also increase clot formation because, as we know, blood clotting initially starts off with the formation of a platelet plug. Heritable disorders such as congenital defects in coagulation, including factor V Leiden, factor II mutation, and protein S and C deficiency, will all increase the blood clotting ability. Finally, pregnancy and oral contraceptives, OCPs, contain estrogen, resulting in higher estrogen state in the body, which promotes hypercoagulability, especially in the presence of other risk factors. The last factor in Virchow's triad is venous stasis, which reflects a low rate of blood flow over the site of vessel injury, concentrating blood clotting factors at that site. Two main factors can cause venous stasis. One is obesity. A sedentary lifestyle will lead to poor venous return, leading to lower rate of blood flow through the veins. In addition, fatty tissues contain more aromatase, which converts more androgens to estrogen. This results in a more hypercoagulable state as already described. Other factors that lead to venous stasis are fractures, immobilization, bed rest, and long vehicle or airplane rides, oftentimes if a patient is sitting for more than a few hours without moving. This reflects reduced muscle motion, which reduces the venous blood flow in the legs. Now, assuming all three of Virchow's triad are met, blood will clot, and typically will clot in the leg veins. Why? Because these veins are deep. They're large veins, and they allow for more blood pooling, which contributes to venous stasis and hypercoagulability. Venous return from the legs often go against gravity. That reduces the rate of blood flow through these veins, contributing to venous stasis. And finally, the valves in leg veins are often prone to backflow, which also lead to venous stasis. Because of these three factors, the formation of a thrombus or blood clot inside the leg veins is what is known as a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. There are two complications of a DVT. The clot can first of all destroy the valves in the vein, which leads ultimately to venous insufficiency, a condition where the clots, or the destruction of the vein valves, prevent blood in the veins of the leg from returning to the heart. Blood will accumulate in the leg, resulting in unilateral leg endema and venous inflammation, seen clinically as redness, warmth, and tenderness over the leg. Another complication results when the clot in the leg embolizes or moves to the lungs via the veins. This is known as a thromboembolism, and the most serious complication is a pulmonary embolism, which is acutely life-threatening. However, this can also occur in a chronic process known as chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, when the veins of the lungs are so clogged with blood clots that the veins lose their elasticity and result in a higher blood pressure within the vessels of the lungs. And that's it for the pathogenesis and complications of deep vein thrombosis. If you learned something new from this video, 
please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with other medical learners who are curious about this topic. Thanks, and see you in the next Carrot Guide video.